Thank you, Fernando, um, for the introduction, and thank you, everyone, for being here today. Uh, so as Fernando just said, uh, today's presentation is based on the main trend on energy storage business model market. So previous weeks, uh, we have been talking about business models and their trends, but only based on smart heating and electric vehicles. And as you can see in the work plan that we followed to develop this analysis is actually quite the same as the one that we did, that we developed for the electric vehicle and the smart heating. But the only difference is that the classification of business models and the characterization of the of these uh, is based on different uh, characteristics as there are different technologies. So um, what we did was uh, first, in order to find uh, the current and future trends for this technology, we identified a long list of business models, which was characterized and evaluated based on some characteristics that I will show you afterwards, uh, such as innovation, financial attractiveness, and others. And based on this analysis, we could identify the main trends, the technologies, and the barriers, which uh, will be the focus of today's presentation. So uh, to begin with, I would like you to understand why, what we mean by business model. If you have been to the previous one, you, I'm sure you already know this uh, definition, but I would like to, to repeat it in case there's someone who hasn't been here. So a uh, business model is a strategy to invest in a technology. In this case, we are doing energy storage systems. And uh, this is a strategy to invest. Uh, what it does is that it uses services, such as the implementation or installation of a mechanism or technology, uh, or it provides uh, finance and options, so uh, in this sense, these services are used as a deliver mechanism to create value and to lead to, the, to an increased penetration of this technology in the market. So once you have understood what we mean by business model, what uh, I would like uh, to explain to you is to highlight which are the key aspects that we took in mind in order to evaluate the different business models. So as you can see, in this case, we have seven different uh, aspects. But the first one is innovation that actually measures uh, if a technology is intelligent, so the cutting edge of the technology apart from the storage itself. We also studied business models of just storage systems. But we wanted to measure if, uh, how innovative were these business models. The scalability uh, the different business models present. And this means that uh, actually we measure the possibility of implementing these business models in a higher range. For example, we had some business models that were centered on the residential segment. So we had to study to which extent we could maybe a scale up that business model maybe for industrial customers. So this is what a scalability means. Then we have uh, replicability, uh, which uh, measures the possibility of implementing the business models for other applications or with, with other purposes as well as in other countries. Uh, the fourth one would be the additional services provided to the customer. We value if there were complementary services, such as maintenance, control, guarantees for the batteries, stuff. The fifth one was the ease for the customer. We think that as this market, as we will see afterwards, uh, it was it's quite immature. Because we are studying the only the behind the meter energy storage system, uh, and this market is immature. It's becoming more mature each day, but it's quite immature. We wanted to see which were the facilities that uh, companies provided with their business models to customers to implement these solutions. 
And the sixth one is the benefits for the customer, not only if it's uh, easy to implement, but also if they had any benefits. Maybe they had savings, they reduced the big cost, uh, they had tax rebates, that kind of information. And the last one was the financial attractiveness. So it's like the financial impact for the customer in terms of down payments, if they had the option to make a lease contract, or maybe there were incentives in the country. Um, so these are like the seven main characteristics and aspects that we study to evaluate the different business models and to select those. Based on all these that we mentioned before, we selected 30 business models in different countries or regions. And as you can see in the graph, there's a wide range range of different services offered in its business model. Although the majority cover the implementation as well as the finance, financing and the uh, monitoring software uh, in order to keep in track of what you are uh, storaging, what are you injecting to the grid. So, so uh, we wanted, we selected some of these business models, a short list of these 30 business models, in order for you to see that uh, the business models that we found vary from conventional standard electric storage systems to, for example, one of them that is actually my favorite because it was the one that I thought I found it more strange, like more rare. I never heard about something like this. That is an ice storage system for electricity. So uh, it's quite strange. I will explain it afterwards. But uh, I would like to give you, in this sense, two explanations, the ones that are highlight highlighted in gray. The first one, which is the power efficient agreement, uh, it's actually a shared savings contract for 10 years that included not only the battery system to the client, but also a software that allowed the customer to control the battery and view all the savings, the evolution on the storage, and provided the, the customer a web portal in order to remote control and monitor uh, what the, the battery was doing so uh, that uh, customers could change if they wanted to inject in a certain moment even though the battery was not full. So uh, that allowed a lot of um, freedom to the customer to use the, the battery system. And the second one is the one that I talk to you right now, which was the ICE Energy. Uh, this one is a system that what it does, it uses electricity into the battery, it puts electricity into a battery in order to create ice at night because the electricity prices are lower then. So, it, this, that electricity is used to create ice, which is stored in another system, and then that ice uh, is it's used to cool the building during the whole day. So, uh, in this sense, customers do not pay for any cooling, or they, sometimes they even transform it to heating by water and stuff. So, it allowed the customer to save a lot. Uh, of money in cooling. This is uh, most common in industrial services, maybe elementary ones uh, that actually need like really uh, like places that they must be cool like all day. So uh, this business model is quite interesting for that kind of company. Okay, so based on all the different 30 uh, business models that we analyzed, we identified five global trends. We divided them in market trends and in a specific business model trends. Uh, the first market trend is that at, in the other markets, we could see that this market, the energy storage market, is quite immature. In this market, there are a wide variety of barriers, especially regulatory, that have the highest impact on due to a difference across markets. Uh, we will see each of these trends in detail afterwards, but I'm just going to show you a brief description of each of them. Uh, on the other hand, the other market trend is that there are a lot 
of companies also in the market. You can see full service energy providers, battery manufacturers, joint painters of financial companies with uh, engineering companies. You see a lot of players that are starting to enter in this new market of energy storage. On the other hand, uh, in the specific business model trends, we have find three different uh, global trends. The first one is that uh, there is a, a growing market in the utility sided energy storage business model. Although, as I said before, uh, this analyze was only focused on behind the meter energy storage, but during our research, we could find some of these uh, utility sided energy storage business model. So we thought it was interesting to highlight it here. Uh, the second one will be that there's also a trend on the integration of renewable energy systems with the energy storage system. This brings a lot of uh, benefits that we will see afterwards. And then the last one is related to the scope of the business model. Uh, here, business models were principally found in the US and Germany because these two countries are the ones that have like the most favorable regulation policies and incentives for this technology. So beginning with the market trends, uh, on this chart we identify how the major number of uh, barriers that we saw on the analysis are regulatory, as I just told you. And this is mainly due to immaturity of the market. So if we uh, if, well, we know the government <laughs> uh, delivered an international standardization of this segment of this technology, it will build trust on the technology and this technology will be promoted. So uh, an example of the different barriers that we found was, for example, there's a lack of battery recycling standards and regulation. There's a battery recycling uh, regulation, but it depends on the country. It differs a lot. So we should have a standard and international one. Uh, there are a lot of discrepancies across markets that double fee. If you are an energy storage provider, you have to pay for both because you are acting as a generator and as a consumer. So there are some charges that you pay for them both times. There's also a uh, functional classification limitations due to these regulatory restrictions. There's uncertainty as it's an immature market and also the high technology cost. This is due to maturity also. Uh, if we uh, regard more research and development, uh, these costs will be reduced as it has happened with uh, PV energy, wind energy. All these technologies were really, really, really uh, with high cost, and they have been reduced in the last years a lot. So uh, these are the barriers. And now the other market barrier and market trends, or it's also a barrier in some cases, is that the energy storage market presents a wide variety of players. As you can see, we found energy providers, such as Aon, Entega, SolarCity, AGL that offer whole a whole package of service. Like they offer maybe the installation of the storage system with maybe a renewable energy system, but also they give you the energy supply for the battery. So they offer like the whole package, the one-stop solution. Sometimes they don't include the financial part, the financial part, but most of the times they do. On the other hand, we have the engineering companies. These are the ones that manufacture the energy storage system, but they do not just manufacture the system and sell it maybe to Aon or Solar City. They also sell it. They also give uh, different financial uh, options. Uh, they give uh, different uh, monitoring systems. So um, in this category, we found Tesla, which has become really famous also because of the cars and stuff, but mainly because of the batteries. And then on the other hand, we had the joint ventures. Principally, these joint ventures are financing institutions and engineering companies, but you can find other types of joint ventures. But I, I just wanted to highlight 
three of them. There's, for example, the New Jersey Clean Energy Program, which is a financial program for this kind of electricity, which uh, has a joint venture with Solar City. So they offer a one-stop solution. Uh, Hero and Sun and do the same. Bits Energy and LF Capital. So inventors are the ones that normally offer the whole one-stop solution. It's rare to see that they do not offer service. There are cases, of course they are, but in our uh, identified business models, we couldn't see a lot of them. <coughs> the second, sorry, the second trend uh, based on no, the first trend, sorry, um, the business model, it's actually that, as I stated before, we are only focusing uh, our business models on behind the meter, but as we did a lot of research, we could see how there is a growing market in utility-sided uh, business models. This is a trend that we observed a lot in Germany. They have a favorable, a favorable regulatory market, so uh, this market, what it's doing is sending a clear signal to investors that battery storage provides a value creation opportunity in the regulated market for ancillary service. So as you can see, for example, Clean Technia did an analysis on how the grid scale energy storage global power capacity will evaluate, will, um, will grow or will yes, expected estimation. And as you can see, uh, we have in 2024, uh, it would be more than 20,000 megawatts of this technology, while nowadays we are around the 3,000 megawatts. So it would be a really growing trend fast and really increasingly one. And then, uh, also, uh, the second uh, trend of business models is that, as we said before, these business models are focusing on integrating renewable energy systems with a, a storage system. Normally, what we saw is that they combine PV systems, mainly for households and industrial facilities. We didn't see um, more examples. And the, the tr this trend presents various benefits to clients and also to the electricity market. So as you can see in this in this table, we have the load load shifting from low demand, our peak to peaks, uh, the optimization of renewable uh, sources, which uh, helps to supply fluctuations, the extra reduction to clients and of the utility bills, it provides ancillary service to the grid, and also it uh, makes a consumer, it provides the possibility of becoming a net fair installation, which for a consumer is quite uh, good, especially maybe for companies that they want to represent that they are green. They, they help with all these new tendencies to this green new market. And the last one would be that the U.S. is the one which contributes to the largest number of business models. Uh, if, if you have been to the other uh, webinars that we did on smart heating and electric vehicles, you can see that the U.S. is always the one which contributes to the largest number of business models. This is mainly due because uh, they are the ones that are taking the advantage of federal regulation policies and incentives then all these business models are the ones that are translated to the European countries. In this sense, Germany is, for, is following the U.S. quite ahead, but it's still behind it. So um, I just wanted to say thank you for being here today. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them now, or 